Here we go on episode 88 of the Trash Talk Business Podcast. As always, I'm Andy Wines. He's not Casey Bubba Lawrence. He's Taylor. Taylor's joining us today, Hi. our producer. Actually, you know he's joining us from the other room because I can actually hear myself echoing um, through his headphones. So if I yell today, I'll, I'll be able to hear myself twice. Anyways, Taylor's joining us. Casey is under the weather. Um, somehow it's getting worse, Taylor. Should uh, I run you know to the what? other room? Yeah, I'm going to run to the other room. Taylor's going to run to the other room. In the meanwhile, I'm going to do Casey's job, which is I'm going to introduce our guest, Skip, who, other than knowing his name is Skip, I know nothing about him. So you can tell I've done as much research as Casey Bubba Lawrence would normally do. <laughs> so, Skip, how would you find yourself on here today? Yeah, so I've I've actually seen, as of recently, I've seen you more on, on some of your YouTube stuff. Okay. Um, and then I'm in some of the same Facebook groups with for junk removal and that kind of thing. Um, saw a post that you put up, um, and uh, and I said, yes, yeah, doing a podcast would be fun. So here I am. Yeah, we we put up a post like three hours ago. Casey was on the weather. Our our guest today um, couldn't couldn't make it. They had emailed us over the weekend saying they had something pop up, so they're going to reschedule later in the week or possibly later in the month. And uh, so it was like, oh, Casey and I will do it. And then he and his family are in the weather. So it was going to be me sitting here talking for an hour. Um, and then we, you know, it's like anything else, right? I, I Before this, I did an episode of Experience Annie Wines Live. And I talked about planning the work, working the plan. And we had a plan. And then it went to shit. And then we created another plan that went to shit. And then we're on, you know, contingency number three, which is like, well, hold on. There's always people that hit us up. Sometimes we ask people like in the middle of an episode, like, hey, hop on, and it doesn't work always. And other times we're like, hey, let's uh just a couple hours, you know, a couple hour, a couple hour uh heads up. We can people on the podcast, which is relatively simple. We got the technology, so here we are. Here we are. So Skip, where are you in your junk removal dream journey? Oh. I think we lost you, Skip. He might Audio have muted out. himself. Oh, you mute, you mute yourself, Skip. There you go. Oh. I can't unmute Skip. Try to get there. Him. I am. There, there you are. Is. All right. Taylor's back. Skip's back on. All right. So where are you at, T Skip? Where are you at these days in your junk removal journey? So we, uh, I started um, in 2021 uh, with kind of the idea. I was going to go into it. It was spring. I kind of drug my feet a little bit, missed the busy season. Summertime, I was ready to go. Um, and then I actually partnered with somebody who already had a junk removal business that had had died. Um, she oh, had inherited it through a divorce or something, I think, and um, did that for the rest of 2020, excuse me, 2022. It, it, the partnership wasn't going to work. It, we, we just, you know, we didn't have complementing uh, ideas and personalities and that kind of stuff. So uh, this year, 2023, I, I said, I'm going to do it on my own. So I, I, I launched um, about this time last year, actually. Okay. And what, uh, where are you located? I'm in the DC area. So, okay. um, I'm right across the border, across the river in, in Northern Virginia. Uh, people refer to this area as the DMV, but most of the time when I say DMV, people think I'm at the driver's license place. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have a need. <laughs> DC, yeah. Maryland, Virginia. It says D DMV. Okay. And what are, what's your, what's your business name? What's the brand name out there? You yeah, know. so the brand is Be Happy Junk Removal. It's uh, B E E like a bumblebee, uh, hence yeah, the yeah. yellow and black. Um, yeah, so we 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 put together a logo. My wife helped me with that. Just did some Canva stuff and and uh, got the phone number, LLC, and all that good stuff. And off to the races. All right. And where are you guys at business wise now? Are you owner operator running a single truck? Yeah. Owner operator, uh, single truck. I have um, my son who is about to turn 17. My wife homeschools, which is really nice. So I can oh. I can grab him on jobs where I need hands. He's as big as I am. Um, and he can kind of do his schooling around uh, work schedule. So that, that worked out really well for us. I get free labor. There we go. Uh, well, you know, and eventually that free labor goes away. <laughs> so Correct. it's a. Uh, it's it's just I, I tell people right. It doesn't matter um, where you start. It's about where 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 next is. So I'll ask you that. What does what does success look like to you? You know, ninety days from now, one year from now, three years from now. Where do you want to be? What does success look like? Yeah. So so ninety days. Like right now, I, I started with a uh, uh, what I had, which was a E two fifty cargo van. 
Uh, it's about eight yards interior. Um, so we, we got all that out and, and that's what I have. So 90 days from now, I'd like to have a, a, a bigger truck. Um, okay. cause we're, 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 we've gotten busy enough where I think I can, I can do that. Um, and in a year from now, I'd like to not be on the truck, to be honest. I, you know, yeah. I, I have a couple guys that would like to work with me. Um, not my son. He's ready to get off the truck as soon as possible. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, yeah, that's where I'd like to be. And then, and then go from there. All right. And what, what, uh, you know, you've, have you, have you gone through the whole, uh, library of episodes or have, have you, have you listened actually, have you even listened to trash talk business podcast? We'll start there. Yeah. So I did early on when I was going into business, um, you know, last year, uh, I did, I, I listened to probably eight or 10, 12 episodes. I heard yep. some of those episodes where you guys had talked about being part of, of the franchise stuff and then getting away from that. Um, and then, and then I've watched more recent, uh, your stuff, Andy on YouTube. Um, you know, when you're bumping around the, the, the warehouse in there. So. Got it. So what, uh, what stuff two parter, what stuff is sticking out? What is, what is, what resonates with you that works and what questions do you still have? Yeah. So a couple of things I love, I, I love the, a lot of the guys in the forums that we're, that we're in hate this stuff about separating and resale and stuff like that. I love that idea that, 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 um, that model. So I, I am moving towards that. That's one of the things I'd like to do is get a warehouse and, and eventually maybe a resale space where I can do some of that stuff also. Um, because I'm in DC, there's so much money here, quite honestly. Um, probably 50 or 60, maybe even 70% of the stuff that we get paid to remove is resellable because people just are upgrading a couch or something. And, um, you know, we get so much stuff that is so nice that we just end up donating. Um, so, so yeah. That's going to be your typical job. Yeah. So our typical job is furniture, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Um, bedroom sets, living room sets, you know, like we just did one last week. It was three complete bedroom sets, bed, dresser, nightstand, all matching, all three rooms had matching furniture, good shape. And they were just for the holidays, were upgrading all their children's bedroom sets. Hmm. Um, and so we pulled all that out of there and was, was able to resell it pretty quick. And in you as you and your wife did the resale itself? Yeah. So I, right now I have a, uh, a, I rented a 10 by 30 storage unit. So I'll take yep. that stuff over there and, and I resell it out and I put it on marketplace and, and, and uh, offer up in some of those different platforms to get the, get the people buying. Yeah. When, when the model work, when, when you have that, um, whether it's auction or, or direct to consumer resale, you know, Facebook marketplace or wherever, even Etsy, you can sell, you know, more antique, smaller things on Etsy. Um, I I've seen businesses where it's 50% of the revenue comes from the resale. So it's 50% service on one end, 50% resale on the back end. It really takes uh, a lot of intentionality because those are two very different businesses. Correct. And and you almost need well the the, the um it's a boyfriend girlfriend team that I know do it. Uh, it very much works because they both have their lanes. He bangs the jobs, she does the resale. That's now they cool. both do it. She'll, she'll go bang jobs, no problem, and he'll help her with the resale. It's very clearly who's running which line of business though, right? Um, because otherwise you get caught up. That's one of the reasons why I don't do resale anymore. I am all about running trucks, routing trucks, banging jobs, hitting up scrapyards and donation centers. You know, with good routing, I'm not as interested in, oh, this thing's worth three hundred fifty dollars, and let me list it for a buck seventy five, and take the first one twenty five, and talk to thirty seven people on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. Like I'm already exhausted. That sounds time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, right, 175 hours. Let me go find a two item pickup for a buck sixty nine, and you know I can generate the same amount of revenue. Yes, right. there's bigger cost, obviously. Yet, uh, fine. You know, if you say that, you know, if you say there's fifty bucks to be made, I'll I'll find a way to make fifty bucks some other way. So, it, it, so long as you are intentional and you have the right team behind you, that's the way to do it. The challenge is people don't know what business they're in. Some people are in the resale business that happen to have a junk removal company. Some people have a junk removal company that happened to do resale. Uh, there's also another couple, husband and wife team out of PA that I knew years ago with a franchise model. And they had made, they were making between like one and like $3,000 every single weekend on resale. So they would basically just sell stuff out of the garage. Like if it wasn't snowing or raining, they were selling on a Saturday morning. Right. So, you know, she said like, when they first started, it was like 500 bucks, you know. So it was like, all right, it was worth their time to open the door, right? Because anything less than 500 bucks is it's a lot of messing around just to be open for the day, you know? For sure. So it, it can be done. 
are you in a I always think of DC as everything's very affluent because there's too much money. Is it a relatively affluent area and there's high density of population? Like seems like a really, really good market. Yeah. Oh, you you mirror yeah, yourself. It is, again. A, it is a good market, for sure. Yeah. Um and and it's high density, but it, it has a sm small town feel, as as weird okay. as that sounds. It's kind of spread out. It's not as dense and put together like as a New York City or something would be. Uh, because you do have the like the tri-state area. I mean, DC is not a state, but tri-state area kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, it's it, a lot of money, like uh, a lot of people moving in and out constantly because of government changeover and contracts and lobbyists and you know military. It's all here. So like you get people here on one and two year contracts. They move in, they move out. So you have a lot of that turnover. Um, and so I just did a job again uh, about two weeks ago. A guy that was a, like a lobbyist or something. He was moving back to Dubai, and literally had an apartment that was fully furnished, one year old stuff, and the whole thing. And he said, "I need it all out. I'm taking none of it with me." And, Interesting. Yeah, and so that I mean, there was a PlayStation Four in there. There's all the furniture, the beds, the pictures on the walls. I mean, it was just a full apartment that he just what? needed out. You know? Yeah. I mean, you you got the money, and it's a convenience thing, and away you go. Yep. I'm kind of curious about one thing. What's the, your uh, service area? Are you looking at covering the whole area or taking a, a chunk of that and expanding as you go? What's kind of your yeah. idea on that? That's a good question. So I, I, I have started some online marketing this year. And, uh, uh, you know, obviously the, the closer to, to home base I can be is, is best. Um, but we've started picking up some of the guys, you know, some of the jobs that are you know, on the Maryland side, I'm on the, on the Virginia side. So I, you know, I got to kind of cut through over there, you know, and without traffic, it's 40, 45 minute drive um, with traffic it can be an hour, hour and a half. Um, and, you know, I just try to bunch those together if they come in and, and you know, spend a day over there. Um, yeah. But yeah, otherwise like that, that does happen here for sure. Where, where you're kind of outside of a normal area that you, you would, you know, quote unquote, want to market. So what's, I, I'm a yeah. map guy. I'm looking at the map. What city are you in? I'm in uh, it's a little town called Annandale, which is just outside of Alexandria, Virginia. Oh, so you're south. Got it. Okay, so you're, all right. Annandale, Annandale, Annandale. Where, how do you spell that? I mean, just A N N A N D A L E. Annandale, Virginia. There we go. All right. So west of yeah. west of Alexandria. Yep. Okay, so you can be on the other side of. The uh, uh, was the Potomac. I can't Potomac. remember. Yeah, yeah. You can be on the side of the Potomac, and then so do you go into DC then, or do you stay oh, yeah. on the Virginia side? Yeah, no, I go into DC and uh, and Maryland. So, okay. um, you know, we've done some some government stuff in in DC this year, and government buildings right down the street mm -hmm. from the White House. Um, and then you know, a lot of townhouses here. So, just about everything we do has stairs, which mm -hmm. is a pain in the neck sometimes. Um, yeah, not a lot of driveways in that area. <laughs> no, not a lot of garages or driveways. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's one of the things that we have here in the Midwest. It's like everyone's – like most people have – outside of the city, everyone has a driveway. Most people have a garage. You know, yeah. You fit, you, we can fit two of our trucks in a lot of driveways and makes life – you know, it just – you know, older cities don't have that convenience. Correct. Um, that kind of all right. explains why you're looking for a truck as opposed to possibly a trailer. Unless yeah. that's also an option. Yeah, yeah, no, I was, I'm definitely looking for a box truck again because of, of the stuff that we're pulling out. Um, and then uh, also, like when you get into places like DC where it's street parking, you, mm -hmm. you get a little more leeway of like kind of blocking the street a little bit, you know, with a with a, a work truck than you would do um, you know, like a pickup truck and a trailer kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I started. We started our business with a with a um, Ford E three fifty, you know, twelve pack van with the seats taken out. Yep, and I love that van because um, I could slide things in, slide them out. It was everything was a one man operation. There was nothing I you know had to worry about getting in there. I could keep things nice. Now the problem is it was a van, so I couldn't fit like uh, king size mattresses in it, and you know some you know some pieces of furniture like you put like two pieces in and you're done. You know like two dra two decent sized dressers and the van's full. Right. So there's there's obviously advantages to getting a bigger um, bigger truck, and I agree. Yeah, truck and trailer. You know, Casey will live and die by the truck and trailer, but he's in Texas. Texas is right. big, got plenty of space, and everyone's got to pick right. him up truck, you know? Um, so, yeah. I, and actually, there's a guy here, um, uh, here in our, our Milwaukee area, Junket with Jay. Um, I, I talked to a vendor, a textile vendor that knows him, and um, 
you know, he's a he's a one one man operation. I think he's got a couple helpers here in the area, and he has a U-Haul truck, and you know, he does moves and removal, and he does all right for himself. You know, yeah. so I'm I'm all about the owner operators that are you know building their own branding and you know buy that old U-Haul truck and go make it happen. Like that that's that's um that's good for our industry. You know, good good stewards to our industry to, to build it out. Um, I'm, you know, obviously very anti-franchise because, uh, well, they screw people over on a daily basis. And the one that I came from is, is faltering even more. Well, wow. uh, they just laid off a bunch of people at the corporate office and they're messing around with people that want to terminate. Right. You, you, you spend more time than dicking around with people that don't know what they're doing versus focusing on your business. Right. So, and look at you, you, like you said, you and your wife, you know, came up with the brand name, color scheme basic logo and you're off to the races yeah yeah you know and I, I i started in, in uh, i grew up in the tampa bay area i should say okay. um, which is a little more like the midwest everybody's got the driveways the garage yeah. the swimming pools and uh and and that's how the idea came to me because i did kitchen and bath contracting i've always been in the home services industry okay. uh, for years and years down there I had my own business down there so when we ended up moving up here i had a hydraulic dumping trailer for my own personal uh company for the the kitchen tear outs yeah. Um, and then so someone told me years ago, I mean, we're talking 15, 20 years ago now. Hey, you should rent that trailer out when you're not using it. And and it, be, it quickly became the most profitable part of my business. Just dropping the, the dump trailer off in people's driveways, letting them fill it. And then I would haul it to the dump at the end of the day. Um, and so I said, if I ever go into business again, I'm just going to do the, the 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 dumpster thing. So lo and behold, we're here. I'm like, hey, I'm itching to go into business again. And um, and started looking into the 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 dumpster drop off. And then of course, all the junk removal stuff starts popping up online when you start researching that. And I was like, Oh, I can do that. And so that's, that's how it yeah, goes. So, so what got you out of, what were you, did you have a regular ass job in between there? Or yeah. 2021. What, what triggered you to want to get into business ownership again? So, yeah. So I, I've always been in business ownership, like in the home service industry, I moved up here um, back in 2018 and, um, and I, I started a bathtub reglazing business. Uh, just because of the, the the entry point was a little harder for most people, uh, a little more niche. Um, talked mm -hmm. to a few people that did it and loved it. Um, so I did that. I started it, and it was hands down the fastest growing business I ever started because it was so niche. Um, and so you're, and was, you're relazing so people that had like cast iron tubs that don't want to get rid of them. That's it. We were paint. It's like painting a car. You, you mask everything off. You sand everything down. You prep it. You prime it. You paint it with a sprayer. Uh, in and out in a couple hours and they have a brand new tub. You can make a pink bathtub white. You can make a rust, you know, fix the rust, all, like all the stuff, just like a car. Yeah. Um, so it was phenomenal. Uh, that, that was a six figure business in the first year. Like it was just like, boom. Um, and then I uh, did that until COVID. So COVID uh, when that happened and everything got shut down, that, that business died. I mean, it died, died because you know, all the safety equipment we need for the breathing, for the, for yeah. the painting, you couldn't get in anymore um everybody bought it off the you shelf out your like, supplies that's it. <laughs> yeah. and, and then people didn't want you in their houses at that time yeah. and it was just crazy so so we we took a breath for for a minute and uh and i'm like all right what's next I, i'm not gonna i could either resuscitate the bathtub business which i personally didn't care for i didn't like suiting up and having the respirator and duct taping myself in someone's bathroom with a exhaust fan for four hours while i'm in there spray you know I'm, I'm a little more extroverted i like to be you know, meeting new people and stuff. And so like yeah. sealing yourself off into a room, that wasn't my favorite thing in the world. Um, so once it died, I was like, you know, I can either resuscitate or I can do something new. And this uh, dumpster thing sounded good. Um, and then never ended up doing the dumpster thing. I just went straight into junk removal. Okay. That's okay. That was my next question. If you ever did get, if you ever did get into the dumpsters, what would that look like? Okay. All right. Yeah. So now what, what's next on the horizon? What's the next, Obviously, Bro. getting the next truck or whatever that looks like, but what else? Yeah, so uh, I, I'm I'm really looking to grow. Um, I I have started doing some, some of the the marketing stuff, and it's 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 showing well. I'm doing it's doing well here. Um, I, I do. I would like to get the the box truck first, just because of the nature of our business here. Um, but I, I would like to have both. You know, I, I I said I'd get the box first, and I'd get the um, the the dump truck second. But mm -hmm. I, I may, when I get to that point, go hook lift, you know, if, if, if it sounds good so that I can kind of pair that, um, with the junk removal. And so the other thing I like about the hook lifts, honestly, is 
is at the end of the day, if you have two more jobs with the dumps closed, you know, yeah. you can drop one and pick up another one and go do it. Yeah, I know a couple of people, um, especially so the old roll offs were all cables and those were, I want to say dangerous, but they weren't as safe. And the hook trucks, the hook lift trucks are a lot safer, simpler to operate. So there's definitely an advantage of going the hook lift. Um, and yeah, it, it allows you to have greater capacity. Um, and I know quite a few people that have them and operate them without renting their dumpsters. They, they, you know, the other thing is you can, you know, if you have a job that's got a lot of uh, construction debris, for example, and you've got the space to work, you can drop them and then walk the material in versus, you know, having to lift it, you know, waist height and then chest height to get it into the, the truck right. itself. So there's definitely some advantages um, with the hook, hook trucks or hook lift trucks, whatever you want to call them, even doing junk removal. So yeah, that, that makes sense. I don't, I don't hate that idea. Certainly in your area, because of what you're telling me though, that doesn't really solve the problem you have. The problem you have right now is the capacity and then also keeping the nice stuff nice so that you have resale on the back end right. or at the very least donate. Yeah. Yep. And so we did a job in my E E250 van. Um, and it was a brush and, and mulch removal. He already had the mulch taken out of the beds and piled in yeah. his driveway. And so we went and shoveled it in, you know, shoveled it in the van and had to shovel it out. And so like when, when you're into those kind of jobs, it really stinks, you know, but. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, oh, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I know how much that sucks because I used to do it. Right. I put yeah. a big tarp, I put a big tarp down. Yes. I don't care how well you tarp it at the end, you got to lift the tarp up. Then you got to close the door. Then you go open the door. You still get yep. tarp. You still get uh, mulch crud. A month later, you're still finding mulch and shit. We had, we had a snake in our van, and, we, oh, and yeah. I tried to grab it, and it, it ran from me and, and went under the seat or something. So, like, for the next two weeks, every time me and my son <laughs> were getting in the van, we're like, like shaking stuff to make sure there's no snake jumping out. No, nope. I, like, yeah, I, I do no not. Fun. I do not mess with vegetation or you know yard waste whatsoever. I yeah. so I tell you how much I, yeah. for that kind of stuff, right? You you just get it in there and and you're done. You dump it. Yeah, I, but I don't even I don't even take it. Like if someone said, "Hey, yeah. I mulch," I'd be like, "Cool, call landscape company." Right, and it, and it's because I've done it before, right? I, I I have got where I'm at today because I can I I, I can. Does anyone can say no? I have I have learned what to say yes to and what to say no to. That's yeah. what it comes down to. I ain't earned shit, right? I'm I'm who the fuck am I? However, I I have you know when people are like, "Hey, can you do this?" Yes, doesn't mean I'm going to. Doesn't mean it's a good use of our time. You know, right? Casey, Casey and I both talk about that quite a bit on this podcast. It's like, can I? Yes. Well, I know there's a, there's a huge difference there. So that's a fun thing, right? With me being fresh into business this year, um, doing junk removal, uh, I said, yeah, I've said yes to everything, you oh, know, yeah. and I go out and do it just because I need the business. I need the money. I need the repeat customers. I need the reputation, all the stuff. And so we have those days where we end up, you know, my, you know, my son, again, he's, he's about to be 17 years old. He, you know, I'll say, Hey, I need you tomorrow. He's like, what are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just a big I mean, I mulch one. <laughs> it's really appliances. He's like, oh, thank God. You know, in those days where it's brush or mulch or you know bricks or whatever, he's like, Ugh. and and the thing is, you have to say yes at first, right? Like that's that's the yeah. beautiful thing. Like there there's people that got in this business and they said yes to one thing and that completely derailed them. Like I got a guy um, I met doing the the Jobber Masters of Home Service podcast. Shout out Jobber. I got my uh, what do you call it right there. My, uh, my Yeti forces me to drink uh, water. Yeah, the promo code. Uh, actually, that promo code's expired now. It was only through oh, the end. promo code. Jeez. No promo code. Jeez. No promo code. <laughs> uh, although, you can go get job. I'm going to drink some water because that's how I stay hydrated. Anyways, I did an episode with him on season two of Masters of Home Service podcast. He did um, gutter cleaning. And he started doing that after doing land. He had done uh, grass. And then he's like, oh, I could probably do gutters. And they started doing gutters like that more. And then gutters turned into Christmas lights. And now Christmas lights turned into, you know, hanging Christmas lights turned into being the procurer of Christmas lights. So now he makes more money and spends more of his time on Christmas lights distribution for all other Christmas light hangers in the United States. And he wow. started with grass and then gutters. Yeah. Right. So it's like you, you, it's better to start something and be like, oh, I actually want to do this instead. I've also met people that did junk roll for a while and they're like, oh, actually, I'd much rather do dumpsters. Or like, you were talking about renting your dump trailer. It's like, it doesn't matter. I'm yawning now. I was talking earlier today about how I don't get my afternoon crash, but apparently I went too hard this weekend. I just, yeah, I, and like, I really do. Like, I like the business. That's the good part. I, I really enjoy it. So like, I, I found, you know, like, I'm going to be in this. We're going to build. We're going to grow. 
um, and, and to grow, unlike the bath over glazing business. I, I did not enjoy that at all, you know, although it was good money. And I've, I've, I was finding myself, oh, man, I'm like going to paint myself into a corner, so to speak, where I'm trapped here because of the income and I got to keep going. And, you know, and, you know, COVID put it into that. So here I am. And I, and I really do enjoy the, the business. Well, I got something. It sounded interesting to me, especially when you're talking about the reselling aspect. Is that something that you enjoy doing or do you more enjoy doing the whole picking up landscape and mulch and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like your kid isn't. <laughs> yeah. If, if, if it's choosing between landscape and mulch and resale, I'll take the resale. But if it's the normal stuff that we do in junk removal, I actually enjoy the junk removal side better. Um, I, I, I like sales and, and customer service and stuff, especially being in kitchen and bath contracting for years and years. Um, is, uh, you know, I, that's that's my love. I really enjoy it. Yeah. Out so, out. We do our estimates for junk removal uh, uh, in person, you know, unless it's a single item pickup or something. Someone's like, hey, how much for my fridge? I'll, I'll do that over the phone. But, uh, you know, if it's, you know, I got my garage or I got this junk or my bedroom set, we do all that stuff in person, get there, make friends. You know, they hire us to pull their stuff out. And, and I do enjoy yeah. that. I enjoy meeting people every day. So what's your limitation on growth right now? You know, in 90 days, you want to have this truck. What What is what's preventing you from getting it? Or what yeah. will, or what will, what or what will allow you to get it? You know, which, whichever way right. I take this this question. Cash, like right now, we're going into busy season or slow season. So, like I, I, I kind of, I was trying to see if I can get there before we got to slow season uh, financially, and and so, uh, so now I'm just going to take a deep breath. We'll, we'll run the van uh, through slow season, and then you know, going into March and April is is the target date to get get the pull sure. Okay. Yeah. Does, does your wife work outside of the business or does she work in the business or what is her role? Yeah. So officially she's the owner of the business. Um, she's a Hispanic woman. Um, and being that we're here in DC with all the government stuff, we did that on purpose in case we ever get to the point where we, we need to bid for contracts and that kind of stuff. Yep, um, for visibility. <laughs> yeah. So, so I have a, a minority woman as the owner. Um, I'm, I'm operator. Um, but no, she's, she's at home. She helps with the, the back end stuff uh, and putting customers into the system um uh, all the creative stuff on canva logos mailers you know all that kind of stuff advertisements that we put up online she she creates um and then she's with our kid we have four kids and uh she homeschools so that's enough yeah what uh what, what do you find is your uh top place you're getting your, your leads from where what, what marketing endeavors are working in your area that's always one of the top questions is you know yep Sale, that, sales solves all, right? There's that adage and, and there's truth behind that adage. So where are you where are you finding most of your leads coming from? So I'm getting a lot of them uh, online. Uh, I, I use a, a um, like a, a click company that that puts the, the stuff out there and then they click. Um, I've actually done pretty well with um, uh, Craigslist. A lot of people hate Craigslist. Um, Interesting. Yeah. And, and when I, I, I just did it as a test. Like I, I just wanted to prove to myself it wasn't going to work. Cause I know back 15 years ago, Craigslist was where you would go, you know? Yep. Um, and so I, I spent the five bucks a day for, I don't know, five or six days or something. And the call started coming in. So, so and I'll still I, post on Craigslist. Do, do you have people that are looking for free though on Craigslist or not? No. No, I, the the people on Craigslist are definitely more bargain shoppers. They they're yeah. trying to, to haggle for the price and stuff more so than the ones that just find me online. Um, but I, I do get calls there. Um, I, for me personally, if if it was going to be a half truck, and and I can tell by what they're saying, then when I get there, I'm going in with like a three quarter truck price and let them talk me down to the half truck. And that's just what I do with most of my Craigslist customers, um, and it works pretty well for me. Hmm. Um, we usually end up where I would have wanted to be anyway, and they're happy that they got a deal. Um, so yeah, the other stuff is just off of online marketing a company I've hired. I got a follow-up question to sure. that. So I'm usually in the marketing. I talk to a lot of businesses as it pertains to their marketing needs. Um, are you asking for reviews and getting them on a consistent basis? Cause I can tell you that'll, that's key to growing your visibility and reputation in the area and your service market. Um, for obviously, you know, just being out there. Yes. So we just started doing that um, maybe two months ago. And, and I'm already about, I think about 12 reviews in, in two months of uh, 12 five-star reviews. Okay. So, so that has just started and that's actually helped a lot. I've, I've, I've my customers have said that to me. Oh, I saw yeah, both the asking and then sending the reminder to leave a review. Okay. Correct. 
Yep. Um, so that, that is exactly what we do. Uh, my little spiel that I give right before I leave the, the homeowner's home lot, I'm, I'm taking the credit card or whatever they're giving me. Um, I, you know, I tell them, Hey, you'll get a receipt for this when it gets input into the back end. We do everything by email. And then, uh, we've also implemented a review request. So if we've earned your five-star review, that'll be coming through. So they're already expecting it, you know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you go back to the customers to the beginning of this year or just kind of as of a couple of months? So I did. Um, I, I, I went through and it was funny because, you know, you get, you start mixing up which ones were which. So I was only asking the ones that I knew, you know, would be favorable, you know, <laughs> and, and I was trying to remember right. which ones were which. So I did as far as I could remember. I did do that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, correct. It doesn't, do, it does not do you that much good to go get a bunch of three star reviews. Correct. Plus I've heard from the, from, uh, dentists that they're notorious for just sending out repeat reviews to repeat clients and driving their happy clients crazy because it's like look i already reviewed you guys cut it out <laughs> right <laughs> just yeah. making sure you don't hit them again <laughs> right yeah so so the nice job uh nice job is a third-party program integrates with jobber and that's the nice thing about nice job is that um it sends out review requests once it notices that you already gave us a review it stops sending out requests even if you didn't do it through the nice job platform that's one thing we love about nice job. Total shameless plug uh, is I said, I didn't forget it. I spent second yard today. I spent 75 bucks a month putting it out there or, you know, you know, and, and having the system run and I get and last month when we get like 52 new reviews. So I'm paying yeah. a buck and a half a review when it's all said and done. Like we're at our company's at 890 reviews now in three and a half years. Because yeah, awesome. we bank we bang a lot of jobs and then we 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 you know we're we're systematic and thorough. The other thing we have is a QR code on our thank you card that'll take people right to the review. Again, a little life hack, um expedite the process there. Yeah, you also idea. incentivize your your guys on your team, obviously that you know, skip mm -hmm. that's something that when when you start growing a team, you can kind of grow yeah, into we, Yeah, we talked about that last right. week on the podcast. Yeah. Right. You can't pay your customers for your, your reviews, but you can pay your guys or, you know, bonus them or tip them or what do you want to call it? Um, you know, as a reward system, as long as it's well, you know, documented and detailed out who gets what for what. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I am all about that. And I was um, when I when I first started my Google, my business uh, page at the, at the beginning of the year, I, you know, I went through and I did everything and they said they were going to send a postcard. I never got the postcard. And uh so I, I, Even I run around. <laughs> yeah. Same. Did the whole run around thing. And then I got a thing saying, Hey, your cust this is not visible. And I had to like FaceTime with someone at Google. Um, so that whole process at the beginning of the year drug on and on. So like, that was part of it that I wasn't getting reviews for Google because I didn't, I wasn't even on there yet. But now that I went through their whole process, got everything cleaned up, I got the blue check mark and the whole thing with them. So, so that's been good. Yeah. And the other thing is too, for some, people to leave reviews on the bbb because they might not have a google account especially for older customers yeah yeah and, and the, the the company i just started using um that helps with that they they will uh if a customer leaves a review it actually gets sent to like five or eight different places so it goes to <laughs> google it goes to bb uh, better business bureau it goes to facebook my, my business facebook page and and a couple other places but yeah it's all Link. They give one review. It goes to five different places. Which and really what platform is this? It's a company called Reputation Rooster. Huh. Um, phenomenal. The guy that, that runs it is a super awesome guy. I, I love working with them. So yeah. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Google it right now. See, I, I have, like Google I will it. I will pimp the people that I use. However, there yeah. are better people. I'm already assuming that you have a website too. That's already set it's, up. It's, yep. The business name. It's Be Happy Junk Removal. Dot com it's uh b with two e's okay bumblebee Get are you are you showcasing rooster <laughs> are you showcasing reviews on your website yeah so that's one of the places when they give me a review to google it goes right on the website uh onto like a scrolling awesome. yeah yep. yeah because that's uh among the myriad of conversations i have with businesses uh, on, a, on an uh, almost, almost daily almost basis the two biggest, two biggest website websites reviews. And I'm hearing feedback. Yeah. feedback. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, that's that's the word of mouth of today's economy, right? Is is the the reviews. So, yeah, yeah. Taylor, yeah, yeah. Uh, in addition to doing podcasts, is also a marketing guy. He does marketing for. He does, he does some of my personal branding stuff. We talk 
uh, camo crew stuff. Um, and yeah, he does marketing and branding for other people. Marketing is not a strength of mine. So, uh, yeah, that's why, uh, um, something I, I talk about too much. guys like Taylor. That's it. <laughs> I bring yeah. smart people like Taylor in because marketing, not my jam. My girlfriend's also vice president of marketing at a construction management firm. Her jam, you know? Yeah. Well, hire, hire your weaknesses, right? Yeah. Yeah. Complimentary strengths. Correct. Uh, so I, I have no weaknesses. Taylor has no weaknesses. You have no weaknesses. I look, I look fantastic, by the way. Yeah. And better you, lighting uh, in my. Yeah, his lighting. Yeah, he's in my old. <laughs> he's in my old living room when I lived in the warehouse for six months when I was remodeling. Uh, my beer tins fell off the wall eventually. Apparently, yeah. uh, I don't know where they we, went. We don't normally <laughs> go in that room. Well, my wife does a lot of stuff on Zoom, so she hooked me up with the computer and the lighting and everything. I was. Oh, yeah. not, when I was messaging, I actually was not at home yet. So I, I yeah. called her. I was like, hey, I'm about to be on a podcast. Can you set me up? And she's like, what? Yeah, that's not like yeah. you. I, I know you. <laughs> right. I always got Did a tech you, person. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I got here and I was like, actually, before the show, I was like, Taylor, I, uh, for the show I did before this, I couldn't hear it on my headphones, which isn't the end of the world because it's, it's me going 15, 20 minutes. I have no feedback. Uh, and I was like, my headphones aren't working. I'm going to go downstairs, make myself a decaf cup of coffee. And when I come upstairs, we're either going to have a podcast or we're not. Those are the, those are our options. And and I don't know what Taylor did. I don't care. Headphones work. That is, I hired for my strengths. I'm That's good at it. making coffee and talking shit. That is, that is where I come into play. Coffee is the first thing, man. I got to have that first. Yeah. It's part of the uh, very important part of the business in the morning. Yeah. Taylor, what are some things that you've seen, right? You're not in this industry. So almost 90 episodes now. 88. Whenever I hear of 88, I think of Bubba Franks uh, randomly. Keith, Keith Jackson played for the backers, tight end. And then Bubba Franks. And then yeah, uh, Jermichael, Jermichael Friendly. 88. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dale Earnhardt Jr. Yeah. Dale Earnhardt was three. Uh, yeah, so whenever I hear 88, I, I always think of Bubba Franks. And Bubba Franks one year had like 13 catches and nine touchdowns. The guy could catch a three yard pass and fall down in the end zone. That's all he was good for. <laughs> you need him to catch a ball in the open field. Not your guy. Not at all. Uh, now we got this new guy, uh, Luke Musgrave, M- Luke Musgrave, uh, Green Bay football Packers. Since we haven't brought them up, did, did get the W last night on they did. nationally televised Sunday night football against the reigning world champions, Kansas State Chiefs, with Taylor Swift in the audience. She finally came to Green Bay. No big deal. Got the W. (laughs) Questionable, questionable uh, pass interference no call towards the end of the game right after a very questionable uh, late hit call. Did you watch the game at all, Skip? I did. Okay. How can you call a late hit after the play was over when the play wasn't over because the guy had both feet inbounds and was right. actively trying to gain yards. And I'm not all about head-hugging quarterbacks. Like, there are a lot of dirty, shitty hits on quarterbacks. Patrick Mahomes was standing up, getting yards, going for the sticks, and Owens hit him. Good hit. Nice little pop. Little, hey, how yep. are you? Right? <laughs> Mahomes could have stepped out of the yard early. No contact. You can't call fucking unsportsmanlike conduct after the play, when the play was still happening, the math. <laughs> well, that's the the Patrick Mahomes effect, right? He's the the golden Even boy. Even the announcers the are right like, now. "What are we? What are we doing here?" Right? Was so one he, of the refs not looking correctly, and he thought the play was over because he whistled in his head? I don't know. He might have, but it, what it was was the lack of pass interference call. That was one hundred percent a uh, makeup call. Like they're like, Ugh. we yeah, we shouldn't have thrown that one. And there yeah. was a questionable pass interference call earlier where the guy closest to the play didn't throw the flag, but a guy like farther away did. And he no doubt he grabbed him. He grabbed his arm. Fine. Ticky tack. Right. Like, e- even Chris Collinsworth, who I don't think is great by any means, but he was like, yeah, I wanted to throw the flag. So it's unfortunate that that was the headline today. It was like, oh, this pass interference call. Yeah. <laughs> Also, it was from Marquez Van Valdez Gantlin. Jeez, MVS. We'll call him MVS. Formerly number 83 from the Green Bay Football Packers. We drafted him a few years ago. If you look up on the YouTubes or the Facebooks, he has an entire highlight reel of dropped deep passes from Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes. The guy can't catch. He is fast. He can run routes. He can't catch. The ball gets near him, can't catch. Like I, he had I, he had a drop, he had a, a really magnet good, on his back. 
I don't know what it is. I can maybe. I think there's a few of those. There's a few of those receivers in the NFL that are like the uh, the 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 goons in hockey that the fighters. That's all they're yeah, for. That's they're all they're just for. for the speed to kind of take the top end off. You have to that's kind it. of make sure you're, they're covered. Throw, and they throw can't a ball get near them every once in a while to pretend yeah. like they're a threat. That's Correct. it. That's why Tyree Kill is amazing. He's fast and he can that's catch. Amazing. We're not asking for much here, right? He is. But normally you get those track star guys that can't catch for shit. You had you had to bring up Tyree Kill right after they whooped. My Washington Commanders. <laughs> how is how is that? Your, is that your team? You're not even from there. Are you from yeah. there originally? No, no. I mean, I have family up in this area. My dad's from like no the West Virginia com- area. No one's so. a Commanders fan. Yeah. What was the also, idea behind their name change? Also, that's, that's the other thing. The Commanders terrible. is the third worst name they've ever had. Yeah. The Redskins was by far the best, right? And without being yes. politically correct, the Washington football team was like, yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of got behind that. Like, yep. at first it was a mock. And then, like, when they were saying it, like, oh, the Washington football team, I'm like, okay, I can fuck yep. with that. Like, it was a good Maybe it's for SEO name. branding purposes. I don't know. Commanders? The well, problem team. was is they, they wouldn't allow them to uh, um, uh, license it and stuff because the football team was generic. So oh. anybody can make what? a football team. What? Yeah. So, like, the Redskins were licensed by the NFL. And and they couldn't Who's get the buying fans? the commander oh. shit anyways, right? Who is who is yeah, you know what? <laughs> bring back Kirk Cousins. Uh and then on top and then and then while we're uh, on the topic of politically correct stupid, the Guardians the teasing the fucking Cleveland Indians, like that was a that was a solid guardian. Get the fuck out of here. Maybe it's me. Whenever I hear of newer sports teams, I'm just like, wow, you're trying too hard. You're dry- now the Kraken. The, the the hockey team out there in, yeah, Seattle? in Seattle, that's awesome. The Kraken, whatever, because they're like, yeah, we don't give a shit. We're gonna be a mid-level right. sea creature. We don't give a fuck. It was like, yeah. all right, I'm behind that, or like even like I'm thinking of some of the newer teams, like the Golden Knights. They're like, all right, Vegas Golden Knights. All right, you know, kind of a Lord of the Rings, you know, Army football, whatever. Like Golden Knights, I I, I can fuck with that. A lot of yeah. these newer teams, though, they're trying so hard. I remember when the the Panthers and the Jaguars came on. I'm like. What is this? We got two more cats. Like, right. what, are we, what are we doing here? Well, here in this area, because obviously everybody in this area loves the Redskins name. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. Like, when yeah, the, the politically Chiefs correct are, Washington D.C. is you know loves the Redskins. They're yeah. all watching. Right. <laughs> so when the when the Chiefs are on nationally televised TV and they show the crowd and they're doing the oh, uh, yeah. uh, like uh, everybody uh, here yeah. on Twitter freaks out. They're like, oh, they can do this, but we can't have our name. What? There's something wrong with this. Uh, that's one, you know, we're we're not even talking drunk and move anymore, but that's fine. Uh, that's one of the issue I have trash with DC. Talking. We're trash talk. We're doing the trash yeah. talk part of this show. Um, the thing is about DC, I fucking love going there. I love the monuments. There's some great restaurants, amazing museums. Like I love DC. And then you talk to somebody and you're like, oh, I remember why I don't like to come here. Like the, the the people there, the sense of entitlement, the 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 sense of like they have no clue what not even a middle America is like. They have no clue what America is like. They think that America is Washington D.C. and politicians. And it's like, no, that you guys are so insignificant in our daily lives. Like, yeah, your job is to protect and uphold the Constitution. Just don't fuck with my rights, and I I probably don't need you. Right, protect the borders. Let's go to war every now and then. Stabilize the economy and fuck off. That's it, right? Like that is my political stance, right? I'm a libertarian. If I if I had to declare I'm a libertarian, I ever since I was 18, like the idea of like registering as a voter, I'm like, why would I do that? Like, why would I like align myself to a political party and then only listen to the rhetoric they say? The best thing about libertarians is I can fight with Democrats, I can fight with Republicans, and I can fight with libertarians. I can fight with everybody. Because that's what liberty is all about. Like, I have the right to be right, and I have the right to be wrong, and I will yeah. exercise that judiciously. Well, was, for me, when I moved here, uh, you know, I came from Florida, which yeah. was a, which is a swing state. Yep. So it, it, I, it ain't swinging. It, it, has, it hasn't been swinging in years, though. It is well, since when I moved right. it was, <laughs> so, so maybe not now. But the yeah. whole thing was is because of that. Like when when growing up there, every house would have a yard sign for their candidate. Yeah, and I I expected it to be more here because this is DC, right? Yeah, and it's not because everybody already knows who DC is going to. Everybody already knows who Maryland's going to. Yeah, Virginia is kind of on that teeter totter of a swing state. I think Virginia aren't aren't they the ones that vote like Republican 
congressmen and Democratic governors, I think. They're one of those yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My buddy's from um, he's from Richmond, but he always yeah. says that he's like he's like Richmond votes like uh, Virginia votes right, but then gets a bullshit you know Democratic governor that fucks everything up. And I, I'm definitely and most libertarians are more right than they are left. I'm not dying on any hill though. The, right. What what's interesting about Florida? Whenever you drive there, not only do they do the the, the state elections, and, and maybe this is the South on the whole, but I would think of this in Florida. They are about county elections. Like they will fight over who they think should be the sheriff. I right. couldn't I couldn't tell you who the fuck I couldn't tell you a single sheriff in Wisconsin, and I can think of like five in in Florida. At least I can think of their names, right, right. or their faces, right? Because they're on they're on TV. Like if you bring guns in Florida, they're gonna shoot you. That's, that's how it. it's gonna go, right? <laughs> Like, Florida man, like that's it. Like, you Florida man Florida got man? shot today. <laughs> yeah, like Florida's like, if you kick in my door, you're gonna get shot. Next yep. question, right? Like, <laughs> I'm like, let's that's go. What eleven year old kid did the other day? A home intruder shot him. Yeah, he shot a hot, shot yeah. a home intruder, and he and they interviewed him on the news, and they're like, yeah, he was crying like a little baby because yeah. I shot him. <laughs> Good yep. old again. Maybe he shouldn't I, break into my house. How about that? Correct. Like I, I. uh I have my concealed carry license. I I do carry, right? I, I my goal is to never have to use it, right? That's that's the that's the hillbilly math of it. I yeah. have it, right? How does it? You know, God created men and cult created, made them all. You know, made them all equal, like a great equalizer. It's like we can. Right. And here's the deal: most most situations when you treat people decent, you never have to go there. However, yeah. not not every person's decent. Do you ever something. actually speak it up? Do you, do you, like, just because I thought about now, now that we're going back to junk bowl. So I do occasionally carry at work if I'm going in a, a, a shit situation, especially if there's an eviction or there's potential squatters or um, certain neighborhoods we go into with lock boxes where you're like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm walking into. Right. Um, do you have some shit ass areas? Cause you don't go all the way up to Baltimore. Do you? Cause I was yeah. thinking, okay. I was in Baltimore one time and I ended up near Camden Yards. And then I talked to people afterwards, like, that's not the place you want to end up late at night. And of course, I was like drunk and lost with the army buddy. Seems right. like a great idea at the time. Um, this was like before Ubers. So we we're like, oh, let's get in a taxi. This will be fine. And it was, however, looking back at it, maybe not uh, the best life choice. So do you have, I always think of DC as like, it's, it's really, really beautiful in some spots and it's fucking trashy in others. Do you have. Yep that in your your neck of the woods in alexandria and, and other places yeah, so, so right where i'm at it's you don't see too much of that um there are some neighborhoods that are um more blue collar you know uh poor you know but it, the, the thing is here is even when you're like in the poor neighborhoods you're you're getting a townhouse for five hundred fifty thousand dollars six hundred thousand yeah, so dollars yeah poor, poor is relative then. right yeah yeah, that, that's um, the amount of money is stupid and decent. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't know how anybody even lives there. Yeah. So so there there are parts of DC that are like that just historically. Um and, and you know, we kind of know where those are. Um I'll I'll I, I give phone estimates on those. Uh, you know, I don't normally give phone estimates, but when when I'm getting the city and where they're at and I, I realize that what part of town, I'll I'll give the, the quote, you know, versus driving down there to say that hey, that costs too much to take my mattress out of here. Yeah. Um, but, but oh, yeah, yeah, it's not too, too bad. Um, I've never it's felt like I was in danger or anything like that. Yeah, um, yeah. Some of the places I've been to a few times, I wouldn't want to be there at night, like you said about camping yards. But, but uh, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Wa- like, some people think the Milwaukee is terrible. It's like, whatever, every street, you, you can run into anybody. Like, I in all the years we've been doing this, seven, seven years full time, you know, about seven years before that, 14 yards of doing it. We've never had any major issues. And we've had like squatters and shit. We're like, hey guys, like we're here to clean up. And like for the most part, like, all right, man, we good. And and actually we had a couple one a couple of weeks ago where we knew it was a bad situation. They already had uh caseworkers out there and the guy was going belligerent. So we're like, all right, cool, we're leaving. And it was outside, yeah. where it was Department of Neighborhood Services, outside yard cleanup, like the city was hiring us, and they're just like, Yep, no, leave. So yeah, I mean this you guys started out. I'm leaving. <laughs> oh, hundred percent. We, we, we had to clean up homeless encampments before the DNC a couple of years ago. Uh, DNC never happened, but we were doing that. And I remember, like, we had to have cops and uh, there was chaplains or priests and people with a homeless, um, oh, whatever, oh, ho- homeless outreach. Well, because ultimately our job is to get the stuff out of there, right? We're not counselors and, and therapists. like, And we're not, we're, we don't want to be dicks either, right? It's not our job to, 
right. punish them. Or you know, our job is to clean up, not even enforce. Like we're not enforcing shit. We're cleaning up the city because that's what we're getting paid to do. Yeah, talk, talk to your elected politician, right? Like they're they're asking us to do this. We are merely swinging through the pitch here. That's yeah, I did. Said. I did one that was an eviction that I that I um, I get there and the the landlord gave me the, the the key code and I go in and as I'm going out to lock up, somebody showed up. And yeah, he yeah. told me nobody's supposed to be there. And so they, they were like, hey, is so-and-so here? And I'm like, no, they don't live here anymore. Yeah. And like, oh, did they get kicked out? Can I go in and get their stuff? And I'm like, I'm sorry. You have to call the landlord. Yeah, yeah. Sorry about you. Yeah. Well, yeah and that's just a shit yeah, it's a situation we find ourselves in from time to time. And that and that's something I'm, I'm throwing this out to you know people listening. It's like, those are things, again, uh, be prepared for and also realize when it doesn't matter. I mean, junk rule is one thing. Anytime you go into somebody's house, you're taking a risk. Yeah. Right. Like neighborhoods and neighbors and people like it, it's not, I've explained that to people that don't work in homes, you know, people that go to offices every day or retail or commercial or, you know, factories, whatever. It's like, it is completely different when you are in people's homes and businesses all day, every day. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's important to read the room. You know, I, yeah. I, I, I tell my son that cause again, he's 17 and sometimes we're removing stuff that he wants and I'm like, don't start don't asking for stuff it. inside of the house. We'll get in the van. You can have whatever you want. I don't care. Yeah. Um, and then we just did one where um, the the lady's husband passed. And so she's getting rid of his uh, lazy boy chair yeah. that he sat in for 400 years, you know? Yeah. And, you know, she was like, oh, I hope it can go to a good home or be donated. And there was no way this chair was getting donated. Yeah. It was just done, you know? And so, but I had to read the room. I'm like, hey, we'll take really good care of it. I know your husband, you know, spent a lot of time here, blah, blah, blah. And we wrapped it with a moving blanket and, and yeah. carried it out just so, you know, we read the room and we knew yeah. it was hard for her to get rid of that chair, you know? No, and, and, and there's a big piece there. Actually, we have uh, one of our newer employees. It started putting stuff aside like his second day here. And my guys, they were like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like we have, a, we have a 30 day rule, basically like don't take anything home in your first 30 days. Yeah. Like you got to like, Guys want to take TVs home day one or whatever. Like, and even with our guys, it's like we got guys that have been here for years. Like, I don't, I don't care what they take home right now. If it's something that we can recycle or right, there's a little bit we do on the resale side. A lot of times, our guys are taking home the basics. Like, you get like a big old thing of toilet paper, paper towel. Like, that's mm-hmm. fucking money, right? That's yeah. seven, 10, 15 bucks you don't have to spend. Yep. Right. Um, it's stuff yeah. like that. It's like I don't buy cleaning uh, cleaning supplies oh my, anymore. Really. Oh yeah, yeah. If you got to buy soap, yeah, like maybe not soap so much. I, I think I buy soap. Spray bleaches and stuff. Yeah, you know, oh yeah, your bleaches, your your yep. Windex. Oh yeah, we used to have buckets and buckets of it. Thinking, oh, we're gonna use it. It's like, dude, you you. I had a lifetime supply of Windex. Like, how often am I cleaning my windows at home? Right. Once once a quarter, maybe. I I mean, I clean my mirror in my bathroom once a year, maybe. Like whatever. Like. What are we doing no. here? You know, um, no, I could see that resale angle starting to really take off. If you know, you said that you've been enjoying it. If you were to explore it more, because if you're going to continue that, you're going to hit, you know, a, a decision point. You're going to have to decide, you know, am I going to be giving this over to a partner? Am I going to be going and getting a, a building and, and putting it in a warehouse of sorts and, you know, storing it for longer periods of time or, you know, renting out multiple storage spaces? So what, what does that look like for you? Yeah, so I have a, a good friend of mine uh, locally here that is an artist, and 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 uh, she, um, some of her artist friends have done this where they do uh, pop-up sales. Mm-hmm. And so um, everybody kind of watches locally, like on their Instagram or whatever, and they'll say, hey, we're doing a pop-up art sale at tomorrow at this time. And it creates this kind of buzz and this uh, scarcity kind of thing. And everybody kind of wants to come in and, and, and buy the art. So uh, we've talked about uh, as we get closer to spring, maybe doing that just because I know time is going to be a little difficult uh, when we get busy again um, of, of doing like, you know, three hours on a Saturday pop up, yeah, you know, everything's got to sell or that kind of thing. Um, but eventually we'll end up uh, with the warehouse um, I know with with Andy and, and his place, I've I've started separating stuff just from watching him on YouTube doing that kind of stuff. So we've started separating the metals and that kind of stuff. Um, and in fact, I made more in metal today uh, than I paid in dump fees, which is always a good day, you know. We, so we actually monitor we we monitor that matrix that that uh, that matrix that metric. So we we do have our we have a we have a rolling number which is um, recycling against disposal. 
And yeah. our goal is that recycling wins. Yeah. And we, we, we gamify it and we absolutely monitor that um, because it's, it's a simple way of understanding it. Right. If I say, Oh, we spent 3000 hours this month on disposal. Like that's hard to, right. But if you're like, Hey, we spent 3000 on disposal, we got 2,700 hours of recycling. So had we recycled 300 hours more, we would have had a net zero. It's yeah. like, Oh shit. All right. 300 bucks. Yeah. We can do that. Yep. You know, and then, and then it's a, this for that versus a, you know, you're, you're guessing, you know, what you're, what you're looking at, you know, it's, again, right. it makes it, yeah. makes it, you know, nuancically different. Correct. You know? Yeah. And then like, it makes you like, uh, there was times where I was, uh, you know, chucking the old vacuum cleaner in the landfill. Now yep. I cut the 30 foot cord off the vacuum yep. cleaner and throw it in a, in a box. And so, yep. you know, we've started doing all that kind of stuff too, which is, doesn't take any extra time. And, and it's the same thing. I've started telling my son, I've had, I have another guy that's a kind of a muscle head guy that helps me every once in a while. Uh, him too. Like, Hey, this is how we do it. This is why we do it. And, and, and uh, it's worked out well for us. Yeah. And if, and if people, you know, the thing is if, if people have beef with the way you do things or, you know, they don't want to do it, you know, your way, it's like, cool. Then go work for another company. That's Cause there's plenty of people that are going to do it the wrong way. Right. Like, yeah. So why, you know, why, why do it the wrong way when the right way is that much simpler? Yep. Well, yeah, no, you're, you're preaching the choir here. I mean, I'm, I, uh, I don't want to say I wrote the book on it, but I, I, I live and die by that adage. And I'm, you know, like you brought my YouTube videos, like I'll, I'll teach people how to do stuff. But it's basic shit, right? It's like right, to the vacuum, throw the cord in the, you know, cord bucket. And then even if you have to go to the landfill, put the vacuum, you know, almost every landfill has a box for sheet iron. Right? right. If it's not worth the time, it's all you have is like, cool, just throw it in the sheet iron box. Yep. Like it'll eventually get where it's going. And yeah, it's majority plastic. However, it's still majority weight steel. Well, they'll still take it. There's still a motor in there. Yep. Like there's basic shit in there. And, and the scrap yards, when you take sheet iron there, like they know that there's a percentage of stuff that's going to be plastic and crap. Right. You know, and Even when you look at a fridge or an appliance, they all have oh plastic. God. No, yeah. the appli like, for refrigerators are the worst appliances for scrap yards because there's not much steel in them. Right. It's mostly plastic and, and foam. Yep. You know, however, the coil, right, the outside is worth it. Like, yeah, they love stoves and old, uh, old, uh, what do you call it? old wash machines? Yeah. They're all made out of steel. A lot of the new ones are like, they steel housing, everything else is plastic on the inside. It's a plastic drum, right. you, know? you know, depending, again, depending on brand. Like, that's what I, I the crappier, the, the, uh, the crappier brand name on a wash machine, the better because you could, you could break out the, uh, motor faster. By breaking right. plastic versus <laughs> the new ones or the good ones have steel valves. Like, there you go. Right. I like I like me some roper fucking washers. Yeah. Why are the new stuff made out of plastic and you gotta keep buying it? That's what I want to know. Uh, right. Yeah, because it breaks. Well, That's we why. I just uh, for for a government building actually, um, and I've got twenty five or twenty six uh, electric motors um, hmm. and. 10 or 12 of them are new in the box, brand new, never been used. Well, so that's your, that's your, you're reappropriating your, your, your tax dollars you spent. Yeah. So I got those in, in my storage unit and I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to find a place to list those to sell them. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, let's, we just been chatting for a while here. Just random stuff. What, uh, Skip, what are some takeaways you had from today or your first year plus an in independent junk removal top takeaways you've had? to share with our listeners. Yeah. For, for me, I, I feel like even being on this podcast today is, is a, a fruit of this is I, I feel like money moves at, at speed. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I, I saw the, the post that was up on in the Facebook group. Hey, anybody want, you know, to, to guest host. And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And then like literally 45 minutes, I'm rushing home to get on here. Um, so I've, I've found when I process for too long, I miss opportunities. Mm. Um, and, and, and especially in junk removal, it, it, it's not rocket science, right? So just move and learn, move and learn, move and learn, move and learn. Um, and like we were saying earlier, you'll, you'll start to find yourself in, in a, in a niche part of the business that you really enjoy. And, and then you go from there, but mm. yeah, whether it is box truck, dump truck, dump trailer, like I've heard that argument a thousand times. Well, do it, you know, like if you're not yeah. sure, rent one and, and see right, how you right. look, 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 right. look. Do a do a pros and cons list and make a decision. Correct. And just and move. Which, yeah. And then and then make the decision, then figure out, okay, well, like our guys right now, they want to um they want a actually it's a hook truck. They want a hook truck with a box for demo. 
and then we can pull a trailer behind it with our demo tools. So we'd have one rig that has everything. Yeah. Because whatever, because the pickup truck, not enough space for all the tools, but it can pull the dump trailer and the box truck's good, but it doesn't, can't pull the dump trailer or the box truck for all the tools. So it's like, okay, if we did the hook and go truck with the, with the trailer behind it, that's the best of both worlds. Right. Right. It's like, okay, cool. That's the plan. Well, that's how much it costs. So this is how much demo I need to do in three years to justify the cost. Right. And it's like, oh shit. So it's okay. I need a 90 day run of this. And then we go buy the truck. Because now it's clear objective. Like, what do I need to do? That's why I asked you. It's like, well, you want to buy a truck? It's like, okay, well, what's it going to cost? And going into the slow season, what do you need to do in the next 90 days to put yourself in a position to buy that truck? Correct. So that'll, that'll be my top takeaway, right? It's, yeah, business and life and entrepreneurship are fickle. Make yeah. a fucking plan. And then you can see, am I gaining ground or lo- losing ground? And what do I need to do so that... I can make that. I, I'm in a position to make that next decision. You might not make that decision you had planned on. However, you're in position to make the decision versus, well, hey, someday will will come. And like CCR says, someday never comes. Right. And 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 entrepreneurship is that. Like we've heard this a million times, right? Ready, fire, yeah. aim. Yeah. And, Ready, and fire, so, aim. Yeah. Shoot. And I just you always have more. Shoot bullets. it. <laughs> shoot. Correct. Shoot. And always I, more I just heard yeah. somebody on a, on another uh, business podcast. Um, he said it, business is actually ready, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, aim, fire, yeah. aim. Like you're constantly going to be doing that. I like constantly. that quote. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. Uh, fire fast and often. Right. Right. And it sounds like you, you're, you didn't really allude to it to the very end here, a little paralysis by analysis. And it's like, dude, standing still will get you killed. Yeah. At least when you're moving, you're mo- moving the wrong direction is better than moving no direction. Because yeah. now you, you'll, you'll figure out, oh, shit, I'm in the wrong direction. I don't care if we got to do 180 degrees. That's I it. know not to go back that way. Yeah. 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 No, so entrepreneurship is not for the uh, not for the fickle. You got to yeah, be just, decisive and you got to attack. Yeah. I just and, and you learn, right? Like I just did a job that I shouldn't have done. I, yeah. I shouldn't have done it. <laughs> and I'm pulling the furniture out and there's there's literally mice jumping out. Of yeah. the couch Not worse than the and, snake yeah, yeah. snake and, mice yeah and, you know my my son is freaking out and you know at the end when we're all done we're all laughing about it right but uh there's another job that I didn't do that I probably should have done just because we couldn't get to the place on price and yeah. and so like you just learn like I, I kick myself in the butt like I should not have done that one and I definitely yeah. should have done that one but I didn't you know both those things didn't work out and I just keep moving well then and that's the thing that you have to get the reps in and you don't get the reps in by sitting at home saying no to people that's it taylor what'd you have for a top takeaway your first time guest hosting here on the uh oh. crash talk business podcast you've, sure. you've heard all 88 episodes now you get to participate plenty of takeaways and producing and having to cut stuff out and yeah. bring stuff in and move stuff around oh yeah tons of fun uh i'd have to say you know testing testing markets even if it has been even discarded like when you said with craigslist you just put a post on there and you're already getting traction you never know where you're going to get the spark Mm -hmm. but going out and and testing different markets testing craigslist testing google testing yard signs you know it's a great way to find out all right well what works for me in my area right and then i got a spark and i got a catalyst and and growing off of that that's what i that's my top takeaway i'm gonna i'm gonna throw i'm gonna throw i'm gonna throw uh I'm gonna throw some dollars or whatever I got to at Craigslist for shits and giggles because five dollars is a yeah. low, low barrier to entry. Yeah, that's right. Even if I uh, run it for a month, it's 150 bucks. That's it. That's exactly what I, that see, is my mindset. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. You get. I have this, but here's the deal. I can also. I I'll double check our area. I might be able to limit um, where it goes because yeah, I, what I don't want to do is be taking phone calls for shit. Uh, you know, shit jobs. Yeah. But uh, I wonder if I can limit it. I'm going I'm to look. Yeah, I know in my area you can. Like I, I put it just for Virginia. I didn't put it for D.C. or Maryland. The challenge I have is I am. Oh, here. This is interesting. So I typed in Waukesha, which is Waukesha County. I didn't realize this. You can put in a zip code plus or minus mileage. So I typed mm-hmm. that in and it's, and it's 53186 zip code plus or minus 17 miles. Yeah. Yep. That's something to look into. Yeah. Yeah. And I have yeah. found out on Craigslist too, yeah. I, with, with AB testing, um, like using good photos uh, in your posts. Um, and then the other thing I found out on the AB you just testing. Put straight up, you just put straight ads in there? 
Yeah. Yeah. I just made an ad with my, uh, like I put a picture of my truck uh, and then on the edges it has, it's like yellow and black because of my, my business colors and it okay. has the phone number webpage in it. Uh, do you put it under services like labor and move services? Or what do you put it under? Yeah. Labor move. That's the one. You're, so your labor move. I'm looking at it from a consumer side. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I can see right now Kirby estate sale and clean out junk and company. I know that guy, pretty yep. good dude. Mostly does estate sales, or he does a clean out afterwards. Anytime junk, we will never. Have. Okay, so there's a bunch of guys already doing this. And shit. then the other thing that I found out works really well on there from AB testing is on the headline, I put uh, two emojis before and two emojis after. So for me, I'm be happy. So I put two bumblebees and then I put junk removal and then two more bumblebees, and it catches people's eyes as they scroll. <laughs> Have to find, find some camouflage anytime, thing there, Andy. Right. <laughs> anytime, anytime, I'm giving shout outs to my competitors. Uh, anytime lawn care and junk removal, I get a kick out of that because it's like, well, those are like, are you junk removal? Are you lawn? Like, I, I, yeah. I mean, oh, carpet removal and trash hauling service is a random one. Um, yeah, look at junk removal. It's all, it's all paid dudes, moving dudes, moving dudes with pickup truck. I, I like that. <laughs> because my only challenge is do I look less, now. do I look less professional by being on here? But it's like, the fuck does it matter? Uh Kirby also had four posts in two minutes, the last two minutes. So that's why. So this is something you'd have to do every single morning or a couple yeah. times a day. Yeah. When I first did it, I, I was doing it like at eight and noon. So I was doing 10 bucks a day. And and then I back. Oh, so it's five bucks. So it's five bucks every time you throw this thing out. Every here. time you post, yeah. Um, and then I backed off just doing it once a day and I'll, I'll do it at that, that noon time I, I found worked best for me. And so I'm only doing it once a day when I, when I do it, when I, when I get a little busy, I don't, I don't, you know, cause the post will stay on there for. Yeah. I'm looking like today there was or there's five been, days or something. Yeah. There's been like four people that have done it today. Five, yeah. five people. So five bucks a day to be in the top five, right? Like, yeah. And it like re-ups it to the top and then it drops right. down and then it re-ups it to the top. Right. Yeah. Yep. Huh. Yeah, if I just did my due diligence every day, posted at noon. Yep. And use the same. So you said A B testing. So what's the difference between your A and your B? Yeah. So I did A B testing, like with the pictures, which picture I used for my first picture or my last picture. I again, I, I did the uh, the headline. I, I A B test the headline. Um, I I found that not putting my business name first. I just did junk removal. Um, yeah. Worked better. And then I do the two emojis, the two bumblebees, junk removal, two more bumblebees. Um, so. I just went back and forth and like, I would, I would get, you know, this many calls. And then I was doing, um, inside the body of the post, how I would know which one they found. Um, I would put mention this for 10% off or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. That way you could do the AB testing. Correct. <laughs> yep. And so I got it, I got it played out pretty well where I haven't done much AB testing in probably the last four or five months. It's just the same one. And then that word. Yeah, so I found one that works, and then I just go in every day, and you just hit repost. Yeah, just repost. You don't, you don't have to add all the information. It's, you just post the same ad over and over again. I got me thinking about something. Because the other reason I want to uh, – so um, one of our top three marketing initiatives is, is Google. Google, that's it. Right? Google, you know, paid ads or SEO. And I wonder if this helps – it's one. I mean, it's one more backlink, and especially if you post it every day, it's one more backlink every day. Yep. Coming and from the ability in another side. market, kind of overlaps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh, also, now you got a, thinking. <laughs> I do. And here's the deal: marketing is not my jam. There's also a Waukesha County Craigslist on Facebook. It's like garage sales and like buy my fucking. It's like it's basically like a marketplace, but they call it Craigslist. Uh, I think a vintage vase from Germany. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, I, I got away from, uh, what do you call it? I, I got away from really, really gorilla shit that I, you know, did years ago. Right. Um, and yeah, some, it, sometimes, yeah. you know, those platforms make a uh, resurgence, kind of like the uh, hairstyle of the 80s. <laughs> yeah. The but maybe not fully, <laughs> but maybe the, the jeans. <laughs> Molds are back. Ashwas jeans, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. We do the, uh, you know, we do the typical stuff too, like the the door hangers on the on the neighbors' houses of, of the jobs we're doing and that kind of stuff. But 
Yeah, no, we got we yeah our our yeah we definitely have an opportunity with our business to get hungrier. Now I'm just looking at fucking Craigslist. Uh, yeah, that's the kind of stuff we've gotten away from because we've been we you know we've almost become too reliant at times on, you know, Google and networking and just be like oh the phone's gonna ring right. Well, not not always. Right. You know? I mean, uh, today we ran four trucks. Tomorrow we're one four five or six. It, you know, uh, we're it's only a matter of time before we're running you know two or three trucks a day, maybe two trucks a day. Uh, you know, as the winter thins us out and we got to, right. we got to be doing what's necessary now to ensure that, you know, um, we, we, Craigslist we keep the phone ringing. That are looking now. So that's the thing is, yeah, it, it so you have off, a, so. and you have a, you have a box truck now, right? Yeah. But, uh, um, four of them. Yeah. So, so we how run, do you, how do you do the, like when you go from different size boxes and different size trucks, how do you do, the, how do you do, change the price up on that when you're or are you just we don't we just, head, pace, but... we just pace everything off of trailers and we tape off the trucks so if it gotcha. fits this much truck we know what it is so even our dump gotcha. trucks are 24 cubic yards and everything yeah. we base is off of 16 cubic yard pricing so if you fill gotcha. one of our dump trucks it's, we charge a trailer and a half there it is so, okay yep we have one box trucks that's 32 cubic yards that's two trailers and our big 24 and 26 foot box trucks are um uh 40 and 44 or 40 and 48 cubic i mean you could fit 48 cubic yards in the one that's floor to ceiling though so we we right. we we you know that's 20 that's eight foot wide and 26 foot deep with a seven foot height um or eight and a half foot wide whatever like we know we're not going to fit because we can't load from the top for example so yeah right. that that's you know that's how we figure it out um and our guys have been doing this for a while like it's not a concern when you're doing quarter trailers and half trailers. Like we, you can bang those and figure those out pretty, right. pretty simple. It is when you're doing those multiple trailers when you go to a 12, 13 trailer job and you're like, all right, we're, we're, what did we haul when and where, you know? Yeah. Uh, and we always do the backwards math. I did one the other day. I did an estimate for 11 trailers, uh, came out to almost 13. I was like, Ooh, so it was like 12 and three quarters. So we met the customer in the middle. Um, and so, yeah, I was, I was off by two trailers Yeah. and, I, you know, I fucked up. Uh, that's it. So ship shape. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'd say, I mean, what are we doing? You know, I'm not going to, you know, uh, re aiming and then firing again. There yeah, you yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, firing, firing. And, 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 and the customer ended up tipping our guys significant, you know, pretty good. And they met us halfway between where I was and where it ended up being. And they were ecstatic and gave us a great review. So it's like, they yeah. were cool about it. They got it. And also, it was a, it was a situation where uh, I got the house right. It was outside and, they had this storage room crawl space underneath the garage. wasn't credit crawl space, but I couldn't I couldn't stand up in the whole section. Um, and that's where that's where I fucked up, you know. Because day one I was within like a quarter trailer of what I thought it was going to be. We did six on the first day and like seven the next day, almost seven. And uh, yeah, that's where I fucked up. So it's like, all right. And I don't. I mean, up until the last month, I hadn't done maybe ten estimates all year. That, you know, that's not where I spend my time. I'm doing the sales right. functions or the operations. So, whatever. I fucked it up. We figured it out, and the customer was happy, and we got paid. And I'd rather get a, you know, 13 trailer. It was called 13. I'd rather get a 13 trailer job at 11 trailers and meet them at 12 than say it's going to be 15 because I'm, you know, not aggressive and somebody else comes in and takes the job. Right. But again, yeah, a job's that big. Right. I mean, four, 14 years of doing it, I'll still fuck it up. Yeah, right. we, we get really good at that. You get really good at walking through a place and seeing what it is and 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 know yeah. what's going to fit. Yep. Oh, absolutely. And and I've also had jobs where I bid it and I knew I was tight on my my bid and someone else there to come in and they're a third of, you know, two thirds of what my price is. And I'm like, I wouldn't do it at that price. Yeah. And you walk away and then I've had customers call me be like, oh yeah, they end up charging me more. And I'm like, I kind of told you it would be, right? And, and that's our reputation. Our reputation, yeah. I mean- we had 890 reviews as of this morning, a five-star review or five-star rating rather on our reviews. Like I, I would rather not do a job where I'm going to, you know, miss the mark with a customer, right. Then, then, then do a job and get someone pissed off because we misrepresented. That's it. Uh, always variable. Absolutely. Always a high estimate, low invoice. That yeah. is the way to do it. And even on like the job the other day, if they would have been like, Hey, I'm not paying a dollar over the 11 hours. I'd be like, cool. I'm going to eat it. Right. That's, that's the reality of life. Right. There were a lot of most people are reasonable. They were happy. And when we get the job done in two days, we got it done in two days after it had snowed and it was kind of a shit two days. And that was it. 
There we go. Someone just said oh, oh, under promise, over deliver. Absolutely. I I love it when my competition comes in and underbid shit because I'll be like, okay, we I know their pricing. I know my price. Like I know how this is gonna work out. And I've had people, like I said, call me the afterwards, be like, yeah, I went with a cheaper guy, it ended up being more expensive. And you're like, I'm not saying it was malicious. Facts remain, you know. Oh, you I, you, I yeah. muted him on accident. Yeah, yeah. no worries. I I do that also, like when, especially when people are price shopping on the phone. I'll tell them, like, because I, I know, like, people are coming yeah. in, they're going to give you the low ball price on purpose, so they can get in there and they're going to start doing the work and they're going to raise the price. And I'll tell people that they're. I said they're going to come in with up charges if they're only charging that. They're coming in with up charges. Yeah, you can't make and, money of that. And so I've gotten a couple calls back where people are like, you're right. They were here in person. They tried to upcharge me and I'm not going to put up with it. I want someone to be honest with me. And uh, yeah, so that, that, that always, will always, it always works out long term. Right. That's it. It will work out long term by being a, a, a good, honest broker. And and for people that want the cheapest deal, I'm not their customer. Or I'm, right. not, I'm, not their, I'm not their vendor, rather. They're not my customer. Correct. All right. I've had fun. Yeah. Yeah. Good. No, I appreciate it, Skip. Jump it on. I didn't. I had no idea where we are. Now you're uh, been on the podcast. Now you can listen to the other episodes and learn all the mysteries of the junk removal industry. That's it. All right. Uh, I'm Andy. He's Taylor. He's Skip. And this is another amazing episode of the Trash Talk Business Podcast. We will see you next week. Casey returns and a guest. All the good things. Taylor, press that button. Thanks for listening. Tap subscribe or follow to get the latest episode. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave us a review and tell a friend to listen. To learn more, visit